Joining us now is OG Gen X. Okay. <laughs> Did you continue with that? We're still restraining around the world. Hello, Gen X. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning. Happy Friday, TGIF. Yes. Good yes. morning, Tindra Viola. Good morning, You know how Audrey. I get on Fridays. Your Giddy. favorite day of the week. <laughs> Good morning, Rufi Audrey, on I, I fire. Thank you for yesterday. I, mean, you I don't know, know what you're oh talking about, but the implications are... I know, are <laughs> I know what he's talking about. <laughs> well, all right. You made it pop. I won't say more yeah. than that. As always. You made it pop. <laughs> Audrey makes it pop. Well, pop, all right. Pop. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States... President Joe Biden unleashed new sanctions on Russia following the country's invasion of Ukraine, targeting Russia's financial system. Biden said the United States will block assets of large Russian banks, impose export controls aimed at the nation's high-tech needs, and sanction its business oligarchy. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. And Joe Tao, Alexander King, and Thomas Lane, the three former Minneapolis police officers found guilty in the killing of George Floyd, were convicted on Thursday of violating Floyd's civil rights by depriving him of his right to medical care. As the 46-year-old was pinned on a fellow officer, Derek Chauvin's knee, for 12 and a half minutes while handcuffed, face down, on the street in May 2020. <laughs> in Ukraine, President Vladimir Zelensky banned all male citizens between the ages of 18 and 60 from leaving the country after Russia launched a full-scale invasion of the country on Thursday, unleashing airstrikes on cities and military bases and sending in troops and tanks in an attack that could rewrite the global post-Cold War security order. Under sports, UEFA announced on Thursday the cancellation of the Champions League final in St. Petersburg after Russia launched a wide-ranging attack on Ukraine, while Ukrainian Football Federation announced the suspension of the National League. And Manchester City's Ukrainian star Alexander Zichenko accused Instagram of deleting his post telling Russian President Vladimir Putin that he hopes he dies the most painful death following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Finally, under entertainment, Academy Award winner, actor and filmmaker Sean Penn arrived in Ukraine to make a documentary about the Russian invasion on Thursday. President Vladimir Zelensky took to Facebook to hail the actor, stating that he demonstrates the courage that many others, especially Western politicians, lack. Well, let's begin what's trending. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyema, announced on Thursday that the federal government is working on arranging a special flight to evacuate Nigerians currently in Ukraine once airports reopen. After weeks of speculation about a possible attack on Ukraine by Russia, the minister, who was on our nightly news program, Newsnight, said that it was very difficult to take a definitive position with regards to advising Nigerians to leave Ukraine. The news is coming amid speculation indicating that the federal government had abandoned its citizens in Ukraine following a statement issued by the Nigerian embassy in Kiev, who considered the situation in Ukraine as emotionally disturbing to relocate anywhere they consider safe by private arrangement. Well, let's take a listen to the minister before we come back for a discussion. So far, the, um, the military action has focused on military installations okay. uh, in, uh, in the Ukraine. Now, uh, regarding uh, evacuation for those who might want to leave, um, what we are, uh, well, first of all, looking at is to coordinate, um, you know, the, the whole mechanism. Uh, to see what is available in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, flights and so forth. We understand that there are five uh, airfields, airports uh, uh, in the Ukraine. Um, so uh, it's the second largest country in Europe, uh, mm. the Ukraine, after Russia itself. So, you know, and our people are dispersed uh, all over the country. Uh, so it has to be something that's well organized, uh, getting people to uh, go to the closest airport to where they are 
and um, and then the moment where we're able, well, don't forget uh, the airfields, the um, uh, closed. Uh, the, 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 the and they've also been bombed. Uh, have have been well have been closed uh, for now. So we have to wait uh, for um, you know for them to open uh, to be able to uh, make any kind of intervention. Well, I'm glad that he's come out to clarify this because obviously you all know that Nigerians are very furious about the fact that it took so long and the fact that, you know, Nigerians are still stuck there. I believe you guys played one yeah. of the, the a video from Ukraine, a Nigerian student that was yeah. stuck um, in a building. Mm. But I'm glad that he's clarified. And the fact is also that they are providing a hub at the Nigerian embassy for people to go to when they have uh, issues at this point. I mean, Rufai. it's great that we've provided a hub. We speak about our country because we want it to be aware. Mm -hmm. It's great if we're having an, an, an hub at the embassy that people yeah. can go to. When those evacuation flights will happen, I don't know. It's very fluid in Ukraine. The main airport, I think Bosriel, I think it's called, I, I, I get the pronunciation wrongly, was hit. And it's not true that it's only military targets. Soft targets are coming in. Buildings are bombed in Mariupol and some other parts. So the situation is chaotic. Yesterday, foreign media had to follow people into underground tubes that they, they are moving into shelter. You had to see videos of parents carrying their child and kissing them goodbye as mm. they took them to a safe place in the shelter. So it is already fluid. It's not true that it's just only military targets. As at the last report this morning, 20 miles off into Ukraine, the Russian troops are encircling Ukraine and they want to go for the juggler of Ukraine, of Kiev. The president, in fact, came out to say that I'm a, I'm a target, Zelensky and the like. So it's not true, that case. What we're just saying is, and I think let's just stay correct. We all, let's stop this partisanship rubbish. We all want Nigeria to be good. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs should take the correction. Once you saw the case was fluid, you should have given Nigeria's advisory a week before to evacuate. Yeah. Based on your own intelligence. You have intelligence attache. That's what we're saying. The other argument they are making here that the airspace was closed. Yes, we know the airspace was closed was from 12 a.m. to 7. It was definitely right. going to get closed right. since the situation got fluid. But what we are saying, you have alerted people on time that please, we can't ascertain what's happening. Leave on time. It's better to be safe than sorry. That's just all we are saying. We'll still support this country to bring in its people out. But take responsibility when you miss the ball on that. You missed the ball on this. Let's not deceive ourselves. The gaffes from the Nigerian side. Well, as the foreign ministry uh, says, we are surprised to receive the news. It must only be the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria that is surprised. An event that has been developing you know, over a period of three weeks. And students, Nigerian students in Ukraine, we quoted earlier on, the president of NANS, Nigerian National Association of Nigerian Students in Ukraine, uh, Adifemi Akinson, had an interview with uh, Angela Olua Iru Phillips, you know, is on the ground there. We quoted also Pastor Sunday Adelaja, indicating that, in fact, attempts have been made uh, for almost a month to get the uh, Nigerian embassy in Kiev to help. Nothing happened. The embassy had to wait till the very last minute after the aggression by the Russia had started mm. to now say, oh, if you find this situation emotionally disturbing, that gaff. This is a war situation. Who would not find it emotionally <laughs> disturbing? What on earth does that mean? Yeah. If you find it emotionally disturbing, then you can make private arrangements. To relocate, Look, Some of yeah. these embassies, there must be somebody at the headquarters who claims some of these things that they write. Because some of, it don't, just, just, some of those sentences don't make sense. Who will not find war emotionally disturbing? Even people who are here safely in Nigeria, hmm. they find what is going on in, uh, in Ukraine. They find it disturbing. Okay, then the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs comes out. Yesterday, he was on television to say that, oh, the attacks have been limited to military installations. How? <laughs> as at uh, afternoon yesterday, as at yesterday morning, I think we had a conversation mm -hmm. around this. It was uh, clear out there it was not only military installations that had been attacked. What was clear was that uh, the uh, Putin forces are heading towards Kiev. They want to sack that government and take over. And that's why Putin is being accused of an imperial expansionist agenda. Although he says Ukraine is ancient Russian soil and that he wants to reclaim it. 
Okay, if we check the papers in the UK this morning, they have this, you know, uh, representative picture of a woman who was affected, right? A that civilian. woman with yes. blood yeah, and bloody. bandage mm -hmm. on her head. Yeah. So yeah. there have been yeah. civilian yeah. casualties. Yes. And the fear is that it will get worse. So I think in this particular case, we just need to remind the Nigerian authorities of citizen diplomacy. Mm. The last part of it is, oh, when the, as soon as the uh, airport airports reopen, then we will send the, Then Very that means that uh, truly, yes. as the embassy in Kiev said, you know, Nigerians in Ukraine are on their own. Yeah. Because nobody knows when the airports will be open. Or, and, and you know already that's the government, a lot of people. The government has said there's martial law in place for mm. 30 days. Right. Everywhere is shut down. Where the people I sympathize with are the uh, majority leader of the House of Reps and uh, uh, the chairman of the House of Rest Committee on Foreign Affairs, who have been mandated to go to <laughs> Kiev. <laughs> I hope they are already on their way. <laughs> if their family members will allow them to go to a war zone. Is Putin thinking or that Ukraine is not a country, that Ukraine belongs to Russia? Mm. And, you know, to turn that phrase, Oji, where's my mafia story? Anyway. You I know. Where's my mother? You know, they had it, but it didn't finish. Oh. <laughs> you know, they say that it's not, it's not personal, it's strictly business. Mm -hmm. But Putin is the opposite. It is personal, it is mm -hmm. emotional. People are going to die. It is yes. going to be bloody. Yes. And he has shown us what he's capable of with Chechnya in, the, in 1999 to 2000 when they went into Grozny and were fighting street by street and people died, civilians died 8,000 in that one city in days. Russians obviously died as well, but he does not care. So no. this is what we're looking at. And the idea that they're Nigerians stranded there sickens me. Nigeria, what do we actually do for our what does Nigeria do for us as Nigerians? Even here domestically, our lives mean next to nothing. We're sitting here talking, everybody's carrying on their lives, their children in captivity in some forest somewhere, yeah. being held by people called bandits, and that it took ages to be declared as terrorists. The message is constant. Your life means nothing as a Nigerian. You are told by your government, don't travel all over the place willy-nilly in Ukraine, and if you travel, have your ID, have, what, is, what kind of advice is that? Is that advice? Other countries told their people to get out. At least if that had been done, if people could then not afford it, or some people thought that they don't, that it's worth the risk, because you know Ukraine as well. Ukrainians, there was a lot of self-deceit in Ukraine. Yes. Unfortunately, I see them as quite a traumatized people. Since 2014, with this separatist agitation, 14,000 of them have died. So they've gotten used to living with this, and they're thinking the same way we do in Lagos, quite complacent. Oh, Boko Haram and the bandits is up north. Yes. We're okay here. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, oh, Putin's not going to do anything because they've been living under the looming specter mm -hmm. of a disaster for so long that they've become inured to it. So some people would have listened to that advice and thought, okay, I can stay in Ukraine. But at least the Nigerian government should have given people a chance, given them the advice to get out and assist them in getting out. That's now the main point. Stuck assist in a war them zone. in getting yes, out. Yes, and people will die. Yes. There will be civilian casualties and it's horrific. Absolutely. Yes, the thing to add to that, I think, is to say the world is facing a very serious humanitarian crisis mm -hmm. in Ukraine, and it's already started. Look, people are trekking towards the border, 300 miles away. Yes. They're going to in Poland. The cold, and Poland crazy. is a smaller country. Mm -hmm. Okay? Ukraine has a larger population. So you are going to have right there on that side of Europe a very serious humanitarian crisis, and it's the entire world that will pay for it. Yeah. The story will continue to develop. We'll take another story. Following reactions to the humiliation faced by the Super Falcons who were delayed for over three hours and subjected to traumatic experiences at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja due to some unclear COVID-19 protocols in the early hours of Thursday, the team were on their way back after defeating the Lady Elephants of Côte d'Ivoire to qualify for the 2022 Africa Women's Cup of Nations while in a video that has now gone viral one of the players, Uche Nakalu, was seen lying on the floor in pain and in dire need of medical attention. Let's take a look before we take some reactions. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
Where are those who are causing the trouble? Where are those who are causing the trouble? That's what we're saying. Where are those who are causing the trouble? He doesn't even know. Where are those who are causing the trouble? They're not causing trouble. Please open. Yes, I want to excuse me. We can increase you. You should let us go. Well, Rufai, before I take your comment, let me take a reaction because a lot of Nigerians are very upset about the situation. Rightfully. This is from Paul Ja, who wrote, Too many lapses, miscommunications, and unpreparedness in Nigeria. And what happened to the Super Falcons is just a good example of that. The NFF clearly did not communicate adequately to the NCDC about the movement of the Falcons because they didn't even know they were arriving. It is so sad. Bye. Why do we keep letting ourselves down in this country? It is sad what we do to ourselves. We just let ourselves down. We become a pot of jokes. It is very sad what we've become. And you know, when I saw this video of how they've embarrassed these ladies, mm. I juxtaposed that with when these ladies did beat the, 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 the Ivorian ladies and they were singing the national anthem yes. so gallantly. So gallantly. Nigerians love this country. We but do. Please, let's stop letting Nigerians down, just like we're doing in Ukraine. Just like, we're not the tire, we're not the shame. Aren't we ashamed? It's not enough for the Nigerian Football Federation to say what happened is unfortunate and that their officials were on the ground and that uh, that did not make a difference. Okay, the NFF also should interrogate, investigate what role exactly its officials performed. And then also there must be an investigation of the entire COVID protocol at the airport. You don't have this kind of, uh, you know, shameless uh, conduct that you have, uh, you know, in, uh, at the airport in Nigeria, in other countries. I cited the example of Ghana earlier, where they are better organized. And I raised the point about how many Nigerians, because of this kind of behavior, think that the Nigerian authorities are more interested in just collecting money for a PCR test. Some other countries don't even require PCR tests anymore. Yes. And you pay, if you are coming into Nigeria, you pay outside the country. It's not that you pay inside Nigeria. So you can't even bought an aircraft outside Nigeria Without paying the money. until they have collected that money from mm -hmm. you. And then you get back into the country and you are subjected to unnecessary delay and humiliation. And I don't think it is fair to treat persons who are going to represent the country well, people who are there, you know, uh, uh, given us a sweet revenge yeah. over the lady elephants of Cote d'Ivoire who stopped us from uh, going to, uh, uh, the Falcons from going to Tokyo. And these are ladies who are going to represent Nigeria uh, in Morocco, nine-time champions of the African uh, uh, Women's Cup uh, in, uh, of Nations in Africa. And then you see uh, Uche Nakalu, yeah. you know, lying on I the mean, floor there. So you discourage people yeah. yes. because is, you do not, you know, prioritize achievement. Mm. I mean, yeah. special arrangement could have been made for them. Yeah. So this is what the NFF is saying, that they had already arranged their protocol officers to guard them through the airport. Mm. And that when they got there, there were like a bunch of people, a group of people that were there before them. And the Super Falcons tried to circumvent the process. And that was how they got detained. How does that and, happen? And you know what even hurts me the most, Oji? A young British girl. A, 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 Ashley, Ashley Plumtree. No, she's not Plumter. a British. She's Nigerian. Okay, she's Nigerian. She said that she's as Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian as you and I. A white British girl, <laughs> out of the love she has for this country, yes. yeah. just started playing for the Nigerian Super Falcons. What memory do you want her to have of Nigeria? This is how we treat champions in this country. Mm. It's just like the D-Tigress. The, the yes, same situation with it the D-Tigress. Those airport officials should really be sanctioned for this. It's a, it's a disgrace. Absolutely. We shall take our final story. On Thursday, a group of armed men attacked four banks and a police station in Edo State, leaving two police officers and five civilians dead. A video now making the rounds on social media shows the moment one of the banks exploded as civilians took to their heels. Let's take a look at the video before we come back for a discussion. My God. Yeah, God. Yes, 
C'est Banco, je ne lance pas Banco. Je ne lance pas la finisho. Oh, Banawa, oh. C'est Banco. Si Zenet, si bon. C'est des tips, d'un. So I tell me she see them, see all of them for us. They go, they don't fit on this all of them for us, see all of them. They don't tell the way they enter. Let me go, they come here. Not say video, they enter here. See them. See the tips. Now they ever still get this cow. See you, God. See you. Why are See Chia Chia cars when they carry comments. See as people they carry money. Hey, we see as people they carry money. Oh. Now the red Corolla, now money do. Tundu, before I take your comment. In another development, a video showing men clad in military uniform, alleged to be soldiers of the Nigerian army, taking cover as the gunmen attacked the bank in Edo State, has gone viral. Let's take a look. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the story of Nigeria, Tundra Biola. Look at those military men hiding. Can you blame them? They said they had grenades, and, and, and that's how they exploded that bank. Yeah, it was dynamite. a Zenith bank, dynamite. Yeah, dynamite. They used dynamite to pull out the doors. Yeah. Those soldiers. But they lied. Yeah, the soldiers felt outgunned, outmanned, and they took cover. This is what we're dealing with. So like I said earlier, we're sitting here wringing our hands, worrying about the fate of Nigerians in Ukraine. While here, who is really safe in this country? Are any of us safe? Is anybody safe to guarantee it here? This is so typical of what is happening in Nigeria. The audacity of the criminals, the way they come, you can even steal without killing the bloodthirstiness of these criminals. And the fact that those who are to protect us are cowering. This tells you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. It is extremely worrying. This is why it's never necessary, as far as I'm concerned, all the hype and spin and hyperbole and fake news. No, the unvarnished truth about this country is damning enough and scary enough. This could have happened anywhere, and we don't know where it's going to be tomorrow. Seven people left their homes yesterday and did not come home for no apparent reason. It could mm. be anybody at any time. Literally, we're all just here on a wing and a prayer. Yeah. Extremely scary. No, That's but you're cool. correct. It has happened even in this island, on the island that you feel is safe. I remember a couple of years ago on that Lekki Link Bridge, when they came into Lekki to, to, to rob the bank, they held everybody to ransom and they left and nobody did anything about it. So we are not safe. So when we keep talking about security, then we must ensure that we are safe. When you see soldiers docking like this, yeah. the question you want to ask is, what's the reinforcement mechanism? Across our security, we should have reinforcement. So apart they from docking, own. they should be able to call for reinforcement. How quick does reinforcement come? We need to rejig our security architecture. They're on their own. Because, see, I don't think those armed robbers can, can, can do better than our military. Our military is strong and great. But if they had reinforcement, they would take these guys off. But there was no reinforcement. But I just don't understand so we why should, they are what we should and improve the civilians or. are not. No, like what we should improve on. There's, no, there's nothing civilians can do. You, we can't carry a gun scared. in this country. They are scared. So what we should do is, we should have reinforcement mechanism that when things like this happen, rather than the, uh, the, the very strong soldiers docking, they can call for reinforcement and they'll face these guys and root them out. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. The report indicated that the armed robbers had superior firepower. Yes. yes. And these security people, when they are confronted with superior firepower, they know. Okay? Urumi, which is very unfortunate, that's a hometown or the first man to move the motion for Nigeria's independence in 1953. Yes. That's the home of the Enauros, uh, both Chief Anthony Enauro and his Peter brother, Papa. you know, is uh, uh, journalist, uh, iconic journalist, legendary uh, journalist, uh, Peter Pan, Peter Enauro. And you ask the question, what has independence brought us? What is the state of our independence? If policemen will remove their uniforms and take to their heels, or, you know, soldiers will be running away from hoodlums. 
It is Uromi today. The other day it was Adwekiti. Mm -hmm. Who knows where it will be uh, tomorrow? Finally, you know, just as we finish discussing uh, Ukraine, somebody sent me a press statement that was issued by the embassy of uh, Nigeria in Kiev on 26th January, in which, you know, they provided uh, phone numbers and asked Nigerians, you know, who may be under any kind of distress to contact the embassy for all kinds of help. But that was not included in the final statement that they, they issued. And of course, the spirit of that initial statement was different from uh, your, your own kind of statement that they eventually issued. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you all very much. for your beautiful analysis, you as always. You all have a great weekend. You, you too. too. That's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you next week.